Now, virtual business addresses have gained even more popularity in the last few years. So I thought that I would shoot an updated video for this year to help you make sure that you're making the right choices. So if that's something that interests you, be sure you stay tuned. Now, first I want to touch on some of the top benefits. Then I'll explain my process and what you need to absolutely avoid. Now, this is one of the biggest mistakes that you can make with a virtual address. And trust me, I've made it too when I got started. So that's definitely something that you'll want to hold on for. Now, some of the top benefits are going to be number one, keeping your address private. What a lot of people don't realize is whenever you you fill out or create a business or an LLC, a lot of that information is public record. So if you start off creating your LLC by saying, I'm going to use my home address as an office, and then eventually I'll change it down the line. Someone who's really doing a deep dive into your business can actually find that address, even if you've changed it later on. So that's definitely a point that you want to make sure that you keep in mind is that you want from the onset to use a, a virtual address. You don't want to wait till uh, later on. That was a, something that I did in the past as well that I definitely came to regret because I knew that my information was out there. Information for an address that I I was using at the time. So one is going to be great for security. Two, again, like I touched on that, I made that mistake. Three is that it's really going to be great for security for you as well, right? Keeping your address private, just making sure that you're you're secure, especially you don't want some crazy person getting tracking out on your information just because he hates something that you said online. Now he's trying to track you down and he's using your LLC to figure out where you live and all that stuff. So I recommend that from the onset, you make sure that you really follow these steps and you do this. And that's something that can really benefit you a lot with leveraging the virtual business addresses. Another thing is the professionalism. You know, having a more professional looking building or address, especially if you're working from home or you don't have a set address yet, is going to be hugely beneficial. You know, a lot of times we don't realize that when you're running a business, whether you're online or not, people are going to Google your address to kind of see what kind of business you're running. So if they Google your address and you're using your home address and they see, oh, it's a house and this person's supposed to be handling, I don't know, my financials or whatever the case may be, they're going to use that judgment, right? We all have a certain judgment that we're going to have when we see that, where we kind of lose a little bit of trust in the business that we're trying to to deal with. Uh, it can lend a lot more to your professionalism, especially if you're just starting off. It, it's a great way to help you out on that regard. On top of that, it's a cheaper route and a more flexible route than you trying to go get an office space. Depending on where you live, an office space can be a thousand dollars, if not more per month, depending on the size, the location, all that stuff, right? With office spaces nowadays or with virtual business addresses nowadays, you're able to get something for less than a hundred dollars. It can be as low as fifty dollars. I've seen it much lower depending on the type of virtual address that you're looking for. And we're going to touch more on what kind of virtual office spaces to avoid as well or virtual addresses to avoid but a virtual business address is definitely great because of the cheaper aspect of it as well another thing is going to be the long-term commitments right when you're going out there and getting office space they're typically going to want you to sign a pretty long-term deal i'm sure you heard in the cases i was first starting off and trying to look for office space which i thought was better route to go and i was seeing that some people wanted me to sign terms of you know i promise to stay here for five years 10 years 15 years whatever the case may be and the tough thing about that is your business is going to change so you might lock yourself into something that down the road, who knows what's going to happen, whether your business grows extremely fast or you end up deciding to shut the business down, but now you still have to hold on to this lease. You don't want to put yourself in that situation and, and virtual business addresses tend to allow you to go month to month or at the very least, they might ask for a six month to a year commitment. And finally, one of the top benefits are building business credit. You want to make sure that you have a solid address and a consistent address that you're able to use for you to build that business credit. And this is one of the great ways for you to be able to do that. So what is my actual process? My process would look a little something like this. First, I want to sign up for a virtual office address. That's my number one step. And I'll include some of my top choices in the description down below, as well as we're going to be touching on one on my number one pick. Once you do that, you're going to receive some government paperwork that you need to fill out in order for them to be able to just handle your mail. It's federal law that they need to have certain documentation from you for them to be able to touch your mail. As I'm sure you're aware, it's illegal for you to open other people's pieces of mail, right? And so they need a form based showing that they have your consent that they're able to open and handle your mail. But what you're going to do once you receive that government paperwork, work is you're going to fill that out after you've actually created your LLC, which is the next step. So step two is now you're going to go and actually create your LLC through the, your secretary of state. And I'll link down below to a company that actually creates your LLC for free for you. And whenever you're filling out that information, you can now use your virtual office address as your, your office address. And that makes it a lot easier for you. That way you don't have to actually put your home address or a personal address on that form. So what are good options for me? Really the only option that I'm planning on to on this video and the only option that I recommend to people nowadays is Alliance Virtual Offices. And the reason being is because one, they're extremely flexible. You know, they have a ton of locations, over a thousand locations, not just in the US, but worldwide. My business actually have some law offices that I use depending on the, what businesses specifically, them as registered agents, as well as uh, for my uh, office location, especially because I'm moving around so much. I'm currently now actually in, in Barranquilla and Colombia. And so it's not really feasible for me to have a, a physical space. And so I prefer that all documentation 
should just go to my lawyers for certain businesses. But in the past, I did make the mistake of trying to use really, really extremely cheap options. Okay. And I'll touch a little more on that here in a second, whenever we get to the pricing to break that down. But they have locations all over the US and it's more than likely that they're gonna have one in your city, which is great. And I think that's one of the huge benefits, but you can always try to look for a more local option. You just wanna be extremely careful. Keep in mind that not all virtual office spaces are created equal. Now, another thing that Alliance Virtual even offers as well is gonna be live receptionist services. So if you need, you know, they can give you a phone number and you're able to receive calls and have a live receptionist pick up calls, things like that. If that's something that you need, they offer that as well. They give you virtual phone numbers, of course, and you're able to get a meeting room booking time, which I think is great. And the way you can really use that, leverage that is, let's say that you know, you're working from home and you have a meeting that you can't conduct at your house or you don't want to conduct at your house, or you don't want to conduct, you know, outside somewhere like a a cafe or anything like that, then you can actually book through their platform. You can book meeting room time. Okay. And that gives you, you know, sort of like a, essentially a boardroom of sorts where you can go in and have that meeting with uh, that person based off of whatever amount of time you need. So you can go on their platform and book, Hey, you know, I need two hours of booking time and you're able to book that time and uh, book that slot and have that meeting. And it's a lot more of a professional atmosphere, right? They're going to be walking into an office building and then receptionists will guide them to your uh, meeting room. And then you're able to conduct a meeting, which is to me a, is a huge plus. Now, in the past, I used to have something similar like that with a company called WeWork. I was actually leveraging WeWork and I still plan on leveraging them for more of like actual co-working space, but it's just the, based on the locations I was going at, they didn't have offices in the locations I was going. And so for that reason, I kind of stopped using them, but it's always a company that I keep in the back of my mind that I, I want to leverage specifically for their more co-working type spaces, which actually allows me to touch on Alliance. Alliance does have they, their co-working spaces as well, though I typically leverage them more for the virtual office address and booking those meeting rooms. I think that's more of a better leveraging for them. If you're looking for co-working type of spaces, there's other companies that do that and you're able to leverage those guys as well. Though they typically won't let you necessarily list your office address. It depends on what kind of plan you're choosing with them and things like that. And they can get a lot more, a lot pricier. Another thing they'll do is mail receipt and forwarding, of course. So if someone sends mail to your uh, virtual office address, they'll receive the mail, they'll accept the mail and they'll forward it to whatever address you want. So what you can do is you can have mail sent to that virtual address and then you can have them just forward it to your home or whatever personal address that you want to receive it from. Now, when it comes to pricing, their plans start as low as $50 a month and can scale upwards depending on what more you need added to the plan. And they offer a few different plans that I'm going to touch on. But one thing I want to mention is a lot of people might see that and say $50, you know, that sounds like a lot. You know, I saw a cheaper plan with X company and this company told me I just pay $5 or $10. The issue is a lot of the times when it gets down to a lot of those lower prices, what's typically happening is that it's going to be more of like a mailbox office, right? And so what that means is is imagine you like a little office that has a bunch of little mailboxes and they're pretty much handling 500 businesses in that same room. And that's kind of the situation I fell in when I first started. And a big mistake that I made was I got a virtual address at a company, really local company that only had essentially one branch or a couple branches in the US. And that's what they were pretty much doing. And so I was using them for my address and I ended up getting mail from my bank, a bank where I was, I had my business checking accounts and they pretty much told me, Hey, you need to either change these addresses or we're going to have to shut down your bank account. The whole gist of it was that they didn't recognize that as an office address and they couldn't accept it. It shows that in their records that they had pretty much converted that into something that didn't qualify and meant that now I had to go scrambling to figure out what kind of address that I was going to use. And this was long before I knew about Alliance or knew about much about the virtual address space. And so I think it's critical for people to realize that that could happen and it's better for you from the onset, use a more reliable virtual address company like an Alliance. Now Alliance offers two plans, right? They got one, the virtual office platform plan and to the virtual office platinum plan plus. And so the plus plan, really the main difference is the plus plan comes with an additional 16 hours of a meeting room or private office time. So that means that you can book uh, per month, you can book, you know, an extra 16 hours of, you know, if you need a, if you know that you're going to be using meeting rooms a lot, or you need to do a lot of meetings, you can get the plus plan and be able to have an additional 16 hours. Or if you know that you might need some private office time, maybe with you're running it with a co-founder or whatever the case may be. And every once in a while, y'all need to come together and work together. That might be something that works for you. So that's definitely an option you want to check out. Again, I'm gonna link to these guys down below in the description. You can be able to, to check those guys out there. Now, if you're interested in learning about where to find other critical parts of your business, check out my video that I actually shot on how to set up your LLC in 20 minutes. I'll throw that video up over here somewhere. Now in that video, I actually touch on everything that you need to know about how to set up your you know, professional email, your phone, your bank accounts, and more. So be sure you check that out. Now, I hope that helps. Let me know if there's anything else that I can help you with. And I appreciate y'all watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.